Chapter Twenty Five of the Exploits of Juve by Marcella Lane and Pierre Souvestre. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Twenty Five: The Trap. Twelve o'clock. Hang it! I've just time to get there to keep my engagement with Josephine. Juve was going down Belleville Hill as fast as his legs could take him by a shortcut past the Sevres School. He cast a mocking glance toward the little police station which stands smart and trim at one side of the high road. Pity, he murmured, that I can't escort my friends to that delightful country house. Then he hastened his pace still more. He was growing angry. I told Fandor to be at Nogent Station exactly at one thirty. Now it is five past twelve and I am still at Sevres. Matters are getting complicated. Oh, I'll take the tramway to Versailles Gate. From there, I'll drive to Nogent Station in a taxi. He put this plan into execution and was lucky enough to find a place in the Louvre Versailles tram. All things considered, I have not wasted my morning. Poor Dixon. He was lucky to get off so cheaply. It would seem now that Josephine told the truth in saying he is not an accomplice of the gang. Juve reflected a while, then added, Only it looks as if that accursed Josephine had put her friends up to the job. At the St. Cloud Gate, the tram came to a stop, and Juve got down, hailed a taxi, and told the driver, To Nogent Station, and look sharp. I'm in a terrible hurry. The driver nodded assent. Juve got in, and the vehicle started. The taxi had hardly been going five minutes when Juve became impatient. Go quicker, my man. Don't you know how to drive? The man replied, nettled. I don't want to get run in for breaking the regulations. Juve laughed. Never mind the regulations. I'm from police headquarters. The magical word took effect. From that moment, heedless of the frantic signals of policemen, the driver tore along at full speed and reached the square in front of Nogent Station. It is only one forty-five. Fandor should just have got here. Juve, indeed, had only just settled with his driver when Fandor popped up from the waiting room. Well, Juve, anything fresh this morning? The detective smiled. Any number of things, but I'll tell you later. Where is Josephine? Not here yet. The deuce. That confirms my suspicions, eh, Juve? Somewhat. I shall be astonished if we did see her. The detective led the journalist away, and the two went for a turn beside the railway line on the deserted boulevard. Fandor, this is the time to draw up a plan of action. Do you remember the directions Josephine gave us? Vaguely. Well, we are now going to the neighborhood of the Rue de Charmille. It is number seven that Lupart and his gang are to loot, according to Josephine. Yesterday afternoon, I sent my men to look at that street. This is how they described it to me. It is a sort of lane with no issue. The house which we are concerned with is the last, standing on the right. It is a lodge of humble aspect, the tenants of which are really away. There are not many people living in this Charmille lane, and the place is well chosen for such a job. At least that is Michel's opinion. Oh, I forgot one thing. Round the house is a fairly large garden of which the walls are luckily high, so it is likely that even if the burglars should discover our presence, they could not get off the back way. And what is your plan of action, Juve? A very simple one. We are going to the entry of the Rue Charmille and wait there. When our men come up with us, I shall try to pick out Lupart and fly at his throat. There will be a struggle, no doubt. But in the meantime, you must bellow with all your might, murder, and help. I trust that succor will reach us. Then you haven't any plainclothesmen here? No, I don't want to let my superiors know about this expedition. The two men went forward some paces in silence, along an empty side street, till Juve halted in a shady corner and drew out his browning, carefully seeing to the magazine. Do as I do, Fandor. He prepared for a tussle. I smell powder in the air. Juve was about to start forward, when suddenly a tremendous uproar broke out. Help! Help! Juve seized Fandor by the arm. Take the left-hand pavement. The two had just reached the corner of the street where the house spoken of by Josephine should stand, when a jostling crowd of people came in sight, rushing toward them, uttering shouts and yells. Juve and Fandor recognized a man fleeing at full speed in front of them, whose face was hidden by a black mask. Behind him, two other men were running, also masked, but with gray velvet. In the crowd following were grocer's assistants, workmen of all kinds, even a nogent policeman. Help! Murder! Arrest him! 
the fleeing man was threatening his pursuers with an enormous revolver. Look out, shouted Juve. Lupart is mine. You tackle the others. But suddenly catching sight of the detective, Lupart slackened his pace. Get out of the way, he cried, flourishing his revolver. Stop or I fire, returned Juve. Fire, then. I, too, shall fire. And leaping toward the detective, the outlaw pointed his revolver at him and fired twice. With a quick movement, Juve leapt aside. The bullets must have brushed him, but luckily he was not touched. The plucky detective again flung himself on Lupart, seizing him by the collar and trying to throw him down. Let me go. I'll do for you. For a moment, Juve felt the cold muzzle of the weapon on his neck. Then with a supreme effort, he forced the outlaw's hands down and, aiming his revolver, fired. Help! I... A gush of blood welled up from the ruffian's collar. He turned twice and then fell heavily on the ground. In the meantime, Fando was struggling with two men in the gray cloaks. Zhu was about to go to his assistance when the crowd now made a rush and the detective became the center point of a furious encounter. Blows and kicks rained on him. He succumbed to numbers. It was now Fandor's turn to help his friend, and he was about to join the fight when he stood rooted to the spot in utter amazement. A little beyond the groups of struggling men, he caught sight of an individual standing beside a tripod on which was placed a contrivance he did not at once identify. The man seemed greatly amused, and was watching the scene laughing and showing no desire to intervene. Very good, very good. That will make a splendid film. Fandor understood. His head bandaged and his arm in a sling, Juve was replying in a shaky voice to the superintendent of police at Nogent. No, superintendent, I realize nothing. It is monstrous. I ask in the most perfect faith. I did not fire till I had been fired at three times. You didn't notice the strange get-up of the burglars and of the policemen of that poor actor Bonardin you half-killed? Juve shook his head. I hadn't time to notice details. I want you to understand, superintendent, how things came about, to realize how the trap was laid for me. I came to Nogent, assured that I was about to face dangerous ruffians. I was to encounter them at such an hour, in such a street. I was given their description. They would have their faces masked and come out of a certain house. And it all happened as described. I hadn't gone ten paces in the said street, when sure enough I saw people rushing towards me, bawling help. I recognized men in masks. Had I time to look at the details of their costumes? Certainly not. I spring at the throat of the fugitive. He has a revolver and fires. How could I know the weapon was only loaded blank? He, an actor in a cinematograph scene, takes me for another, acting the part of a policeman. He fires at me and I retaliate. And you half kill him. For which I am exceedingly sorry, but nothing could lead me to suspect a trap. It's lucky you didn't wound anyone else. How did matters end? The actors, naturally enough, were furious with me, and I was being roughly handled when the real policeman arrived and rescued me. All was explained when I brought out my card of identity. While they were taking me to the station, the actor Bonardin was being carried to the nearest house, a convent, I believe. Yes, the convent of the ladies of St. Clotilde. The trap had been well devised, and Juve was not wrong in saying that anyone in his place would have been taken in by it. And so, while the detective was detained at the station, Fandor, after a long and minute interrogation, returned to Paris in a state of deep dejection. End of chapter 25